During the Cold War arms race, both the US and USSR were testing top secret, cutting edge technologies that seemed beyond belief to deliver nuclear warheads effectively to the other side. The goal was to strike as quickly, quietly, and devastatingly as possible. To accomplish this, in 1964, the Soviets began developing an audacious plan that turned their focus to a most unlikely place. While US attention was trained upwards towards aerial superiority, the USSR would instead target the ground beneath their feet. Underground, in fact, with a brand new experimental vehicle nicknamed the Battle Mole. The Battle Mole was an example of a craft known as a subterrene, a vehicle that travels underground through solid rock or soil, akin to how a submarine travels underwater. This is achieved either by mechanical drilling or by melting its way forward through the ground. Subterranes were originally a figment of the imagination of early 20th century science fiction writers, most notably the Russian author Grigory Adamov in his book Conquerors of the Underground. These science fiction imaginings were followed by real-world designs and prototypes during the 20th century, commencing in 1904 with the first underground self-propelled combat unit as designed by the Russian engineer Pyotr Raskazov. His drawings were thought to be lost at the commencement of the First World War, only to emerge later in Germany. Tests on viable subterranes would continue to be undertaken by the United States, Nazi Germany, and the Soviet Union during the 1920s and 30s. It's well documented that the Nazis conducted various tests on subterranes both before and during World War II. The Nazi project was named Midgard Schlange, or Serpent of the Midgard, in honor of the underground monster from Scandinavian sagas. The total weight of the Nazi underground snake was 60,000 tons, with a crew of 30 people. However, the project proved prohibitively expensive as well as a technical nightmare, so the Nazis shelved it in favor of investing resources on other Wunderwaffe. Simultaneous to the German efforts, the Soviet inventor Alexander Trebelev developed his own subterrane in the 1930s that was inspired in part by studying x-rays of an actual mole. It is unknown if Trebelev's mole prototype machine was remotely controlled or piloted. It was soon realized, however, that a better way to accomplish underground travel would be with the use of extreme heat at the front end of the subterrane. At the time, the amount of heat generation required simply wasn't possible and the concept would only become feasible with the advent of nuclear power in the 1940s and beyond. So the 1960s Soviet version, the Battle Mole, would seemingly be a breakthrough. It's believed that the USSR's Minister for State Security, Viktor Abakumov, demanded on the threat of death that Sergei Vavilov, president of the USSR's Academy of Sciences, set up a special group to study the possibility of designing the subterrene in order to push the project forward. In fact, the creation of the Battle Mole was even more heavily classified by the Soviets than even their atomic project. Encased in titanium with a pointed bow, a stern diameter of 12.46 feet, and at a length of 114.82 feet, the vehicle carried a crew of five people with room for up to 15 additional paratroopers. More importantly, this subterranean boring machine was also able to carry one ton of cargo in the form of explosives or weaponry. The main thrust of the battle mole was a drill at its tip, which needed to be heated to extreme temperatures to allow the vessel to break through deep solid rock. Its main power plant was a nuclear reactor that enabled a speed underground of between 4.3 miles and 9 miles per hour. Its combined mission would be to destroy enemy installations and military infrastructure. This would include fortifications, underground bunkers, command posts, underground missile silos, and missile launchers located inside abandoned mines. Its scope of attack was potentially enormous and highly destructive. It was even thought that the Soviets would have possibly wanted the vessel to also allow for the subsurface delivery of atomic bombs into geologically unstable regions. It is said that the first test of the battle mole in the fall of 1964 was reportedly a huge success. Witnesses were impressed by the sheer burrowing capabilities of the craft. It supposedly passed through hard rock like a knife through butter and was able to easily destroy an underground bunker of an imaginary enemy during the test exercise. Further testing is believed to have occurred in the Ural Mountains region, in the Rostov region, and in more solid ground near the Soviet capital of Moscow. Although the early results were promising, the vehicle faced some harsh realities of physics. A mobile subterrane must work thermally, using very high temperature 
and immense pressure to melt and push through rock. The front of the machine needs to be equipped with a stationary drill tip, which is kept at 1300 to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. The molten rock is pushed around the edges as the vehicle forces its way through. The rock then cools to a glass-like lining of the tunnel. All of this requires massive amounts of energy, and that's why only an onboard nuclear reactor would permit the battle mole to be independently mobile. Without that reactor, the battle mole would have had neither the mobility nor independent energy source needed to run by itself. However, the cooling of the nuclear reactor reportedly became problematic. Sources with clear information about the program have been difficult to verify, but it's said that a catastrophic nuclear reactor failure caused a battle mole prototype to explode during a test more than six miles under the city of Nizhny Tagil in the Ural Mountains region. All crew on board were lost in the blast. This is why it's believed the Soviets abandoned the project, at least publicly, soon thereafter. Yet rumors persist that further development continued throughout the Cold War. It's worth mentioning here that the Soviet Premier, Nikita Khrushchev, was the leading supporter of the Battle Mole. It was the height of the Cold War, and in the eyes of Khrushchev, the Soviet Union had been humiliated due to its capitulation to the United States during the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. The Americans may have made concessions to the Soviets due to the crisis, but the Soviets were the ones who had to suffer the ignominy of pulling their missiles out of Cuba and shipping them back to the USSR. That shame of being caught is vitally important context for why the Battle Mole project was even being considered by the Soviets. Khrushchev was said to have wanted revenge. He fervently believed that one way to accomplish this was with a battalion of battle moles, and he ordered their secret development. Neither the Soviet Union nor the post-Soviet Russian government has ever publicly acknowledged that the Battle Mole project ever existed. However, what is known is that a secret underground plant for the production of subterranes may have been built in what is today Ukraine. What's also known from available data is that the Soviet nuclear physicist Andrei Sakharov was involved with the creation of the machine. His role was possibly that of developing the original soil crushing and propulsion system technology for the vessel. Military records from the Soviet Union's military command indicate that one plan would have been to engage the battle moles if relations with the United States were to deteriorate beyond a certain point. And how would the moles have been deployed on U.S. soil? One hypothesis suggests that the battle moles would be brought on Soviet submarines to the coastal waters of California. The state would be chosen due to its long coastline and the fact that it's seismically unstable. Once deployed underwater, the machines would have then drilled underground to install nuclear charges in areas where American strategic installations and equipment were located. The activation of subsequent atomic explosions in the region would supposedly provoke powerful earthquakes and tsunamis, all of which would be considered natural disasters. Those may have seemed outlandish assumptions regarding what the battle moles could achieve, yet one intriguing question does remain regarding the project. With all the potential capabilities that the battle moles may have realized, why was the project abandoned after just one accident, however catastrophic? This secretive Soviet battle mole project took a bizarre twist in 2017. On February 28th of that year, Russian military expert Viktor Baranets, a retired colonel and former defense military spokesman, published an article in the Russian tabloid Komsomolskaya Pravda titled Trump Pump Pump and Our Big Bang. Baranets' contention was that Russia simply couldn't compete with the U.S. in terms of spending power. So instead, Baranets states, that the Russians need to be cunning in their ability to counterbalance America's substantial military superiority. This Russia can do by means of what he called, quote, asymmetrical response. In his example, Russia would build nuclear warheads that can modify their course and height so that no computer can calculate their trajectory. Baronets also claimed that Russia was, quote, quietly seeding the U.S. shoreline with nuclear mole-type missiles that can dig themselves in and then go to sleep until they're given the command from Russia to detonate. He would then go on to joke, quote, Oh, it seems I've said too much. I should hold my tongue. The revelation by Baronets was nothing short of stunning. The Kremlin immediately dismissed his claims and suggested that the newspaper wasn't a reliable source. Nevertheless, his statements did much to revive what is the ongoing mystery and intrigue of the little that is known of the Soviet Union's highly classified battle mole project dating back to 1964.